I'm Julia from Growing Up Without Borders and I would like to welcome you to Avignon, France. Our very first stop is going to be here at the tourism office. We're going to go find the walking tours maps, all the stuff that is information that is always good to have. And it's just in case you're wondering, right here, right in the downtown, right as you come in. So this is the main downtown street, and there's a whole bunch of neighbors. Stores? Yeah. And the buildings are really pretty. They all have these beautiful designs like this. That's the city bus to get around. So cute, isn't it? So here they have a whole bunch of different ice creams and they have some slushies. But it's really funny because they have so many different flavors and so many machines. Like so many different vanilla, flavors. Mint, chocolate, melon. Is it look good? Well, Nutella. Cities are always Cafe. better when they have ice cream, right? Coffee. Chloe? Yeah. <laughs> and then you have this here. Oh my gosh. And then they have this. And this looks like an old style genitalia. Oh wow. You guys are probably getting used to this now. In every video, there's usually an ice cream scene and a, I don't know, cookie scene? No, ice cream scene. There, there's a shoe stop. This is like the spot where they have all the cafes and little restaurants, a little merry-go-round at the end. This is their city hall. It's a beautiful building as well. I love all the little flags they have on the windows there. Look at this, this is their bank right here. Isn't that beautiful? So this main square dates back to way, way, way back when the city was actually established. Um, so I'm not sure the exact year, but let's just say for a guest, 1400s and in around that time. And um, this is like the first palace that they built, which later became the city hall, Hotel de Ville. And basically the whole square is a beautiful, right now, area for restaurants and dining for basically tourists and such although there's some sure local food as well and uh, people just sit people watch enjoy and have fun and as you can see they have this cool little carousel here that looks like an only day carousel like this for the kids to play on um, but back in the day it would have been like the main center square for people to come and congregate market exchange things and stuff like that I forgot to tell you guys it's referred to as the clock square because back up there is the big clock tower look at this so behind us right here just wondering do you guys feel like you're in a fairy tale land <laughs> this looks like a sand castle to me and as we were coming in you have like the whole city gates around it's just amazing but this is the palais des pope and uh, what it is is all the popes that were in rome they fled to avignon and so they established their own palace here so that's what we're about to go see you can go do a tour and uh, we'll tell you about the pricing in one sec so the palace of the popes is basically one of the largest gothic palaces in all of europe and in floor space it's 15,000 square meters which is equivalent to four Gothic cathedrals. So we're about to go see how just huge and grandissimo it is. And one of the cool things they have in there is they have these like little iPads. Apparently you can put them on a stand and you can see what everything looks like in the olden days. So that's what we're gonna go check out. Okay, so the Palace of the Popes was constructed by two constructor popes, or they were like the in command of the construction. And it was built to start building in 1345 and it ended in less than 20 years. So pretty fast guys. So there's two options, the castle and the bridge, or just the castle. For just the castle, for adults it's 12, reduced is 10. And for both it's 1450 and then 1150 for your kids. And then there's also family passes, so for example 45 for two adults and then two and more children and 37 or something for 
Two and one. So between 30 and 45 yeah. for family, for both, right? For, for yeah, for both. For a gym class. Okay, cool. You can literally see where you're going and stuff. You can zoom in, zoom out, everything. It's like a GPS for a museum. <laughs> so on the iPads, there's a game. So whenever you get to the game, sec, whenever you get to the game, you'll see a little dice. You click on it, and then you can you zoom like this, like this, and then you click on the objects, and you have to find different coins. And then when you find the coins, Go to your chest and you see that you found this coin, but these are the different rooms you didn't find the coins yet. This is pretty cool, huh? Yeah. What are you guys doing? So one of the things you can do is you can take a picture. <laughs> look at what I look like. As an old day-to-day -day person. As two men. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Oh, you're I, I need help. I don't know how to do that. Oh, you have to go back there and do the whole thing over. So here are the portraits of the nine popes. That were here at the time. So we're now up at the tower area and you can see a really pretty view of the whole city below so here it is So right behind us here is the famous Pont d'Avignon, just like in the song, Sur le Pont d'Avignon, this is it. So for those of you who know the wine Chateau Neuf du Pape, I grew up knowing this wine, I don't know why, so my parents drank it, but it actually comes from here because it was the popes that made this wine, so they called it Chateau Neuf du Pape have them here for sale. So other than wine, they made all these different teas, different selections of teas. So this whole room smells really nice right now. So the next stop is sur le pont, on the bridge. On the bridge, all right, let's go. We're not sure which way to go, but I think it's this way. Tonight's supper we eat crepes because we haven't showed you guys us eating crepes yet. What are crepes? Um, basically pancakes, but really thin. French pancakes. Here would be some of the old city walls here, and we are going on the bridge. Let's go. And just FYI, it closes at 6:30, so better be there earlier than seven. So to come just on the bridge is five euros. If you want to do the palace and the bridge like before, it's the 14, I think 14.50 or so. It comes with an audio guide as well. And there is a kid's version too, which the girls opted to do, two of them anyway. So let's go see. Avignon. This here is the Rhone River. It goes all the way from Lyon into the Mediterranean Sea. And um, there is a legend about this bridge from Saint Bernadette or Benete or I forget his name. But basically they said the story goes something like this. He was a shepherd and he heard from God that he should come and build this bridge. But that's not actually the true story. The true story is that he was a business guy and uh, they built this bridge as like a toll from one side to the other because then it made a lot of profit for the city. So there you go. Something they also learned is that the bridge used to be really narrow, so they didn't actually dance on the bridge, but they, uh, like, underneath the bridge, they used to dance. Back then, the bridge, it was built on these arcs, but since the river was so high and flooding and stuff, it broke the middle, and so they rebuilt it, and then towards the 19th century, they rebuilt it, and then after it broke again, half of the bridge. So half the bridge is still broken. So that's why it was never rebuilt, yeah? Yeah. The thing is, is they actually built a secondary city wall. So you've got like the main city wall that is still all around the city. And they built another one to protect it against the floods, which means the water would have come up quite a high level compared to the city walls. 
to show you the city map without a glare but this is basically the city of Avignon and as you can see it's still completely surrounded by the city gates so or the city wall I should say it goes all the way around like that and then there's the Rhone River up and around the whole city. If you're coming here and you have a big car it's probably not a good idea to try and navigate through the streets because the main streets within the city are okay, but then as soon as you turn down, if you turn down the wrong street, you literally might get stuck because they're pretty narrow as it was uh, a Roman city. So the way they created that song um, is that they played it once in an opera house in Paris, then it didn't become famous or anything. Another opera house played it and it became more famous and then more and more people started playing it in opera houses. So it's like an opera song. And also they played it at weddings because it's an opera song. It's not like we know it was nowadays. It was way more like... It sounded like being in a Catholic church when they sing their songs. But nowadays it's like more kiddish and animated, right? Yeah. And how many languages do they sing the song in? It's around the world. They even think it's in Chinese. So we'll have to go there and find out. Everybody sings <laughs> Sur le Pont d'Avignon. So this is my vision of Sur le Pont d'Avignon. Sur le pont d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Sur le pont d'Avignon, on y danse tout en rond. That was my vision of the song. So it's actually known as the Pont d'Avignon, but the real name of it is Saint Benezet Bridge. So just in case you guys want to know. And uh, like Angelique was saying, it was flooded several times from the Rhone River. Then it was abandoned in the 17th century. So they just kind of gave up uh, rebuilding it and making it withstand all the floods and the movement of the river and such. To climb the big staircase behind us. And we're hoping that the gate is actually open because there is a gate and we're not sure if it's closed or not. Here we go. The kids are a little bit tuckered out from all the walking for the last few days. You see the gate up here? We're not sure if that's closed or open, but we shall see. What, Chloe? There's a big tree! Closes at 8 o'clock. It does? Okay, I'm well, okay. huh? In France, we find that that happens. Sometimes things close, but yet they close, close it half an hour before because the workers want to, you know, get to their own lives and stuff. It happens when you're visiting museums, it's like half past and actually that happened to us in Geneva. They were like, museum's closing everybody out and there was still 15 minutes. We're like, but we still have 15 minutes. They're like, yeah, but by the time, by the time you leave, walk down the stairs. Eh. So, <laughs> just FYI, it's supposed to close at 8. It's 20 to 8 and it is closed. I was going to say earlier was with all the walking we do and the running around that we do, sometimes I believe that the kids deserve a big reward. Chloe knows what the big reward is. What is it, Chloe? Prizes how many stay out here. The Novotel prizes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think they do deserve a big, ginormous reward. Yes. Like a water park slides and something cruise. like that. Cruise. A cruise. A cruise sounds better than a Novotel gift, right? Yeah. Tell me why is a cruise better? Well, it depends on which one. I mean, yes, it's nice to go visit the city. But if you did one right here in Europe, you could just stay on the cruise because you've seen the city, or at least us, we've seen like Monaco and Barcelona, lots of the, you've seen all that kind of stuff. So we can just stay on the cruise. And if they through. had slushies, because last time they had ice cream, we would just fill up. So what would you do? Just lounge to the pool all day and let all yeah. the tourists go off and you have or, fun? Or you go in the Caribbean. Or you go ice skating down below. You go down the beach, you go to the I think we should do it, guys. Oh, you go to the kids' pool. So right now we are visiting an aqueduct from the Romans that is 25 kilometers out of Avignon, so not too far, and it's one of the, it's the biggest one in France, as you can see here on the map. So it looks like there's three options to go see the aqueduct. First one is just like an entrance where you go through. It's about 8.50 for adults and six euros for kids. And then there's one that includes a museum tour, which is 11.50 or six for kids. And then there's one that includes a private visit for 15.50 or six for kids again. So 
that's the options to come and visit. Okay, so this here is your aqueduct, and if you don't know what an aqueduct's for, it's for to bring the water into their village, and so that's what they use it. And they used about a thousand people to construct it because it's really big, as you can tell, and it would cost them about 40 million euros. And so it was 50 kilometers long. And something cool about it is they have numbers on each block, so they can like know which piece belongs where, kind of like Lego. When you're beside it, you realize how ginormous it is from a distance. You don't really see it. When you're up close, it's like humongous blocks. Probably can be so heavy and cool. Yeah, and to think how long ago they made it and they did it all by hand, it's pretty impressive. It's actually heavier than the Eiffel Tower, so it's just as you can. It would be heavier than yeah. the Eiffel Tower, wouldn't it? I think so. There's an adults museum which is really impressive here. Lots and lots of details and uh, history about the Roman times and such. And this here is the kids zone and it's, it's also very interesting. Something new. Okay, so tomatoes, did they? Okay, I just kind of showed the answer. Did the tomatoes, did the Roman Empire know about tomatoes? Yes. Did the Roman Empire know that tomatoes existed? existed. No. It says, no, the great navigators of the world brought it back from Mexico in the 16th century. So, interesting. Did they know? The Romans know about an oil lamp. Yes. Apparently, they the could be found in every home, both rich and poor. Something cool as well is apparently wheelbarrows were invented in China back in the first century, but they didn't know about it yet. Julia just did this puzzle. She said it was really hard, so I'm gonna. I'm, it doesn't seem that hard. So one, two, three, four. You watched her make it, so let's see if you can replicate it. Okay. I don't know. Me, so it's kind of like cheating. She was there the whole time. She was helping me. She knew all the pieces. I know. I told her. She was like, she was playing inside. Well, voila. Voila. How easy. Well, this is what they eat. Even the tree beside the aqueduct looks very ancient. So it's either this one or this one. But it is a really old tree. It says it's from the year 908. And is it an olive tree? Oh, cool. And then basically in 1988, they brought it here and it's planted here. So it kind of matches the history of, of the uh, Roman aqueduct. So just so you know, when you come here, it's not like you can come and do a really fast visit. Although you probably can, but it does take a while by the time you go visit the aqueduct and then the museum is quite large and you take pictures and you can even go for a nice swim. There's a beautiful beach area. So just plan to stay for um, like a good minimum, probably two hours. Julia thinks minimum three hours. If you go on tours and stuff because, you know, tours take probably an hour or two or whatever. Yeah, so. but if you're just doing your own. So a, two well, to yeah. three hours.
inside of Les Isles. It's an indoor market here in Avignon. Okay, let's go. This is what it looks like from the outside. It's got a big green wall. It's right close to the downtown area where all the streets are, like this. So right in the center, technically. So many comic books and like collections down. You see a lot of bookstores. Street. Yeah. Here's another one and another one. So we had a lovely stay here in Avignon. This terminates and ends our seven days in southern France, and we picked a good time to leave because now that the sun has been shining on us all week, it's now raining. So good time to go, time home. To go home. Time to go. No more blue skies. Thanks for watching our tour of Avignon, France. Please subscribe and give us a big thumbs up. And don't forget to comment down below where you're watching from. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.